Hello traders, this is Rich from Trade Club. This is the market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Wednesday, December 18th, 2013. We had a down day across the board today of, uh, of different variety. Uh, the uh, overall market side was, uh, was fairly weak as measured by the ES futures. We're down about seven handles. The NQs were down nine, but the Dow Jones wasn't down so much. The market internally was a little bit weak, but nothing, uh, nothing devastating. All there was was really kind of a re resumption of the short-term downtrend that we're in after yesterday's little uh, relief bounce to the upside. So without further ado, let's move on and take a look at the uh, major futures. Here's a look at the ES futures. A couple things should be jumping out. We did uh, roll down and, and, and not quite, but uh, did, a, did a fair amount of uh, covering the gap left from Friday to Monday. We uh, had a fairly decent down day with uh, one more distance below the 10 EMA, and that's probably the real the real point uh, to uh, to take away here. The uh, trend remains short term negative. The uh, level to watch is going to be the gap fill from Friday, which is turn which is 1767 and a half, and the level below that's going to be the 50 EMA, and then below that 1750 is going to be very prominent, uh, being the 4H level to the upside. Uh, Friday's high, and then and then we're going to get back up into the uh, previous swing high here on the chart. On the NASDAQ side of the market, uh, fairly similar design, but we didn't get as much distance below the, the 10 EMA. We're actually kind of a little bit lateral here, just kind of in this little little range after the original break to the downside. So after the original break to the downside, we haven't really expanded the range beyond what we did last week. So the 4H level at 34.37 half is going to be uh, going to be important. And if we if we break below that, the uh, 50 DMA is going to come into play. To the upside. Uh, Big big number is obviously the risk level. You can see how important that is. That is in play. We have our 13 exhaustion in place on the Nasdaq side, just like we have on the ES side. So that's going to going to be weighing on the market here for the rest of the uh, the course until we uh, run this out and at least get nine bars to the downside. Nasdaq side was relatively strong versus the uh, versus the S&P and it has been for a while. We want to watch here is if we see if we can get this breakout in the in the uh, in the NDX versus the S&P. On a relative strength strength basis, we aren't quite there yet. If we go up to the uh, to the weekly time frame, we'll see that uh, this level is still pretty much in play and, and really really important here. If we do break out above this, it'd be a really good show of strength. But uh, for now, this remains uh, pretty good resistance. All right, so let's go take a look at the uh, NDX versus the broad market, the S&P. Let's take a look at the SOX versus the NDX. NASDAQ tends to lead the broad market right now. We want to see if the, uh, the SOX, which tend to lead the NASDAQ side of the market, can in fact assert themselves. So we're trying to see a little bit of a bump off here off the bottom and see some strength in the, uh, in the overall uh, SOX versus the NDX ratio. We've got some good signs here, but I uh, have to see a little bit more. We've got a ways to go before we break above the, uh, the trend line here to get this at least into short-term positive mode. For right now, they've got a little something to build on and see if they can... Uh, see if they can move the needle further and eventually take out the trend line to the downside. Here's a look at the uh, oil services. That's the red line versus the oil futures themselves, which is the blue. We can see that we still have a really big spread between the two. They tend to, they tend to want to trade together. And when they do stretch out, you want to uh, definitely favor whatever direction the uh, oil services is taking. So let's see if we can get this rolling back to the upside here. It would imply that the uh, oil futures will want to pull back higher and uh, maybe revisit that 100 level. Here's a look at the relative performance chart of the XAU, the stocks, the DTK, and the banking index. Certainly the semiconductors were strong today, and that was really the only only really major of, of the uh, uh, major sectors that was uh, really popping up here that we like to like to follow that has momentum. The uh, XAU was just kind of bumping along here, didn't really do too much, but the uh, the DKX and the DTK were both negative, and I uh, definitely want to talk about the DTK a little bit uh, more in detail, which we'll get to in just a few moments. All right, so here's a look at the uh, the major sectors. Let's sort them from uh, from best performer to worst performer on the day. Sox was uh, was definitely the top performer, real good real good performance there. Telecoms were uh, also strong. A little bit further down the list of the majors that we like to follow, oil, the uh, the uh, XAU gold sector was uh, was definitely weak. Transports were uh, also fairly weak today, and the XOI oil index and also the OSX was fairly weak. D 
ETK was down more than 1% when airlines took a really big hit today. Keep in mind that the airlines gave us great trend exhaustion. Let's take a look at the uh, lagging sectors first. Here's the BTK. BTK did uh, roll down here and essentially match its below close on the move, which was the impulsive move down uh, off, of, uh, off of and below the 4H level. 50 DMA has definitely been in play. Uh, we touched it today. We got close to it uh, earlier last week, so definitely keep an eye on the 50 DMA. If we do lose the 50 DMA and see some more profit taking here in the BTK, we're going to wind up uh, rolling down to probably what's going to be the area of the uh, active status trend line. It could be a pretty good drop from where we are, so make sure you're uh, aware of where the setups are to the downside in the component stocks of the BTK. Here's a look at the airline index. Uh, we've got our 13 exhaustion in play. We try to take a shot at the risk level here on this gap up, but you can see how the, how the close was very, very weak. Haven't really been able to break to the downside and develop any momentum. We're still above the 50 DMA. If we close below the 50 DMA, definitely make note of this because that could put this uh, this 4-H level and this active status trend line in play and definitely could uh, give us some, uh, some tradable setups here in the uh, XAL. Let's take a look at the transports next. Transports were, uh, were uh, weaker than the overall market today. Just an inside day, though. A little bit of a bounce going on here. Inside day, we've got our 13 exhaustion in place. Right now, we wind up with just kind of a lateral move here, just kind of consolidating uh, this run to the upside and haven't gotten much of a reversal to the downside. And again, the 50 DMA uh, is going to be important if that comes into play because that will put in a lower low here and an, uh, actually a lower high off of uh, this last little bump to the upside. Oil services index, inside day as well, did not qualify going back to short-term positives. We did close above the 10 EMA, but we did not better that candle by at least a tick. So for now, we're still short-term negative and looking to uh, resolve this inside day. Keep in mind that this inside day could wind up with uh, some tradable setups because we'll have a little extra energy in the pattern since we're kind of wound up here for a little bit more than, uh, than typical. Now let's take a look at the top zone of the day. That's the stocks. Stocks closed up here pretty good close to the upside. We had this lateral uh, move off of the 13. We had this real shallow 1 through 13 to the upside for the for the uh, trending phase of the speaker and the exhaustion phase. So all we did was really just kind of cap this thing off. We did have a pretty high close here, essentially making a new high on the close. Really didn't expand the range to the upside. So we've got to keep an eye on this to see if this is going to break out and go. This could be very tradable and uh, something that, that has really essentially been kind of under the radar uh, for a lot of folks. We did have a takeover, a uh, pretty big takeover in the group um, this week. So definitely uh, could see some more interest in the uh, semiconductor space. Right now the oil futures are still just kind of going sideways here. Just a huge area of congestion here with the 50, the 10, and the 200 DMA. Once we resolve out of this, we definitely should have some better clarity and some tradable setups. Gold today was uh, down after a pretty decent day to the upside. The UOH level is uh, still definitely in play. Uh, we got to get a close and a follow through above this 1250 area. If we see if we did get this one close above 1250, but you see the next day didn't follow through, it was just a little inside day, and then this breaks to the downside. The other thing to uh, the other thing to keep in mind here with the uh, with the gold futures is that we're 11 days down now on the futures count. So a couple more couple more days down and we'll get that 13 exhaustion to the downside and then maybe have a little better uh, a little better better pivot chance here since we'll be uh, in a place and time and price that could potentially uh, get this thing rolling to the upside and maybe give us a shot at the 50 DMA. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. Uh, this has been Rich for TradeSite. Don't forget tomorrow is going to be the Wednesday of the Fed meeting and then we've got option expiration this week. So hopefully we'll get a, a couple of days with some, uh, some good momentum this week uh, before we uh, close out the week.